Once in a while, people collecting fossils or other geological specimens for that matter, ask themselves the following question. Are those rocks radioactive? It's important from safety standpoint because rocks may not only contain and emit some toxic chemicals, but also be a source of radiation, which is invisible, meaning you need a special device to detect radioactivity. We bought one and we'll share the results with you. Before we go ahead and measure radioactivity of common fossils, let me show you one cool way to visualize the invisible particles coming from space. This is a chamber filled with super saturated vapor. When a charged particle makes its way across the box, it hits the molecules, leaving a precipitation trace along its path. It's really cool to see how these traces appear and disappear, and you wonder how many light years those particles traveled before they hit the Earth. This device is called Cloud Chamber and was used by scientists in 1930s. It was instrumental in discovery of positron, which is an antiparticle for electron and sometimes is described as an electron traveling back in time. Wow! Okay, now it's time to test some fossils from our collection. We are going to use a simple radioactivity meter called Geiger Counter GMS320+. First, we will measure the background radioactivity and then compare it to the one of fossil specimens. The levels are in CPM, or particles per minute, or microsieverts per hour, and we will hold for at least a minute because the particle detection is a stochastic event that requires some exposure time to accumulate enough counts for precise measurements. Normal levels are below 50 counts per minute, or 33 microsieverts per hour. The fossilized shark teeth from South Carolina produce radiation about 1.5 to 2 times as high as background. It is still in safe range, but remember, danger of radioactivity comes not only from the intensity levels, but also from accumulated dose, meaning that prolonged exposure can eventually do some harm. In other words, think twice before wearing a necklace from fossilized shark teeth on an everyday basis. The shark teeth from Morocco seem to have the same levels of radioactivity as the background. One thing to keep in mind is that the reading might depend on the size of the piece. Small bits may not produce enough particles to see the differences. This is why we combine as much as possible to get enough mass for reliable detection. These are marine fossils from Florida. Fragments of tail spikes of a stingray slightly radioactive, just a bit above background. Now, let's see if petrified wood from different places is radioactive. A huge piece of famous petrified wood from Arizona seems to be just fine. Same as the background. Remember that in order to trust absolute values reported by the device, you would need to calibrate it on a regular basis and that is a complicated procedure. However, doing relative measurements and comparing the radioactivity between the sample and background should give you an idea about radioactivity of the specimens. Here are more numbers. However, please realize that every sample is unique and has its own natural history. So the numbers are for general guidance. No guarantee that your particular sample has higher or lower level of radioactivity. Read the video description for more data. We will update it every time while we measure new specimens. Thanks for watching. Happy fossil hunting and stay safe. Goodbye.